So, good um, good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I am Pastor Ivana from Life Spring Assembly, um, and it is an honor to be here uh, with all of you guys this evening. Um, it's the first time on a Monday evening, and um, I'm joined with some members from um, our Bible study group, so it's our first session and uh, yeah, it's important that we share the word as much as possible. So any opportunity to get the word out there, we wanna make sure that it is available to everyone. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody that's gonna tune in today. Um, and if you watch this back as well, I hope that you are blessed by the messages that we're gonna be sharing tonight. And we're gonna be here every week as well to continue sharing with you guys. So um, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you <laughs> to you guys joining me here. Um, so something um, we had we have a topic to discuss today and the topic is why do I believe in Jesus but funnily enough um, got to love the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit's amazing um, what the journey that you kind of go with the Holy Spirit is will sometimes lead you into directions where you probably didn't think you were gonna go so although that topic is very important and we are going to get there. It might not be today because we only have half an hour. So um, what the Holy Spirit impressed on me earlier when um, I was just in the place of prayer, just kind of asking, this is something that I'd like to do. And it's a good habit, I think, for everyone to try and adopt um, or to consider as part of their routine is to always just ask the Holy Spirit and keep seeking God for just the wisdom of what is it Give me, you know, help me and give me some understanding of what it is that you actually want me to do. Um, for me, being here and kind of teaching um, you guys and mentoring you guys um, in your growth, in your knowledge in God is really important to me. So I don't take it lightly at all. Um, and I always hope to do it in the best way possible so that you guys can understand the mind of God um, when he was inspiring the books to be written in the Bible. Um, so I, I always kind of seek back to God, almost to the point where I'm always running away. I'm always like, oh God, you know, I don't want to do this thing, but if you're going to make me do it, you have to help me so I can do it properly and do it justice. Um, so something that, yeah, the Holy Spirit spoke to me today and he said, you know, what is really important here is to seek understanding. And I was like, okay. So um, he took me on a little bit of a journey and um, that's that journey is kind of what I'm gonna share with you guys today. Um, and we might then be able to move on to, um, on to why do I believe in Jesus? Cause that's the next step, but it's really important um, for me to impress the need to always desire and to seek understanding. Um, before we venture out and we do things in life, it's really important that we actually understand why we're doing them and why it's important for God that we actually do them um, and, are, and helping him advance the kingdom. So um, that's something that he really wanted me to kind of make very clear before we kind of go into studying the Bible. Um, so yeah, so my, my job as a teacher is to help you guys to begin to draw knowledge out of the Bible and to draw the information out of the Bible. The understanding is the exper experiential journey that the Holy Spirit will now take you on. So for me, when I kind of give you, I'll, I'll be like, okay, there's this text, there's this text, and I can give you some pointers as to kind of how it all now starts to fall together and make some sense. But the Holy Spirit will then take you on a journey where you actually experience that knowledge and that's how that's what we call understanding. So gaining understanding is that experience between knowledge and wisdom. Um, wisdom being the application of that knowledge to our everyday lives. So, um, so yeah. So something, as I said, for me now, um, it was important for me to just share with you the importance of understanding and gaining understanding because it is through that where now we now have wisdom um, and we can make better judgment calls, we'll say, in our everyday lives, um, because we do things based on the will and the desire of God, instead of, oh, I have a great idea and we're just going to do it. It's like, God, is this actually a good idea? And then God's like, uh, maybe not, or maybe it is a good idea. Maybe he inspired it, but it's always good to just double check um, and go back to God on that. So I've got my notes here as well, and I've got my Bible. I hope you guys have your notes, have a notepad and the Bible, because um, I hope to share some stuff with you that will help you <laughs> so we could if you can refer back to it um so yeah so my first um 
point that I guess I wanted to touch on was the we're gonna cover a lot of ground um, throughout the study series so it's not something that I'm just gonna be like yeah um, guys six weeks we're gonna be done you're gonna know everything about the Bible it's it's a forever journey <laughs> I, know, I guess I want to get rid of any um, uh, I can't think of the word now but any idea that we might have or notion that we have like there's a crash course for for Bible and for scripture and to know God um, life our whole life is a testimony it's an opportunity to experience God and to know God at the end so um, let's not you know get into a mindset where we just think yeah okay I'm gonna just see returns in the next two months. No, <laughs> um, you could see returns in the next two months, but even after that two months, you'll continue to see returns because that's how faithful God is. Um, he will continue to reward you as you go along that journey with him. Um, so yeah, so um, it is important that it's not, we don't just think about, we wanna just cover lots of ground. We wanna actually try and capture as much light as possible um as we go down this road and when i say capture light if we understand that god is light um and it is god's light that shines on us and gives us revelation uh, that is where our revelation and our knowledge comes from and it comes from god so our efforts are to capture as much of that light as possible so that we too can become light to other people and so this is the example that we get from Jesus, where Jesus is the light of the world, um, so that he leads other people from darkness. He's our example, that we follow him to become lights as well in a world of darkness, um, so that other people can look at us and see God in us. So our efforts as we study the Bible, and as we come to know God, is that we now will also be filled with the light of God, um, to the point where that's all anybody sees when they look at us. It's just like, oh, look at that bright light. And oh, yeah, there's God <laughs> at the end of it. That's, that's, our, um, that's our journey in life. So um, something that... Um, okay. Okay, yeah, so the Holy Spirit... Yeah, so what I've just put here, sorry, is the Holy Spirit just... Um, showed me today the importance of acting under wisdom and understanding and to be honest that's why I'm here now changing the topic because <laughs> um, I don't like to disobey the Holy Spirit there is actually a scripture that says do not grieve the Holy Spirit so if he does give you an instruction he gives you some advice I do suggest follow it because obviously he is he supplies the mind of God um, and so yeah you don't want to you don't want to take his advice lightly um, so an issue that I had and the reason why it's really important for me to kind of hamper on the point of understanding this evening is and anybody you know you can come back and you guys as well can come back and just tell me your experience as well in church so far like the experience I've had in church so far I haven't managed to gain much depth of understanding and I only really knew that after I came out of church and I'm more now focused on my relationship with God. Um, it was only now focusing on my relationship with God where I now was able to grasp deeper understanding of things. So I think when you're sometimes in a church setting where everyone is used to not knowing anything in depth, you get kind of stuck in that cycle of shallow thinking um, or shallow understanding. Um, so it's really important for me and also for us here at Life Spring Assembly that we try to give you guys as much depth as possible because when you go out now and you will be your interface with people, it's important that when they come to you with questions and they'll ask you things like, what does it mean to be holy? Or what does it mean to be saved? Um, you need to actually be able to give them proper answers and when I say proper answers not just oh you're saved because you made a declaration of faith as Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour that's kind of that's the surface level of what it means to be saved but the depth of what it means to be saved is what you will now gain through your experiential um, journey with the Holy Spirit when he starts to really teach you and even I mean I can give you a little bit um, 
of of what it means to be saved but that's because I've gone on a journey enough now to understand the broader picture so I can make it small enough to be able to just share with someone in about 10, 10 minutes rambling <laughs> but in, in in church sometimes when you'll hear someone speak and they'll just be like yeah you know just confess confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, now you are saved. But they, there's so much more to it. And because they don't tell you the more to it, probably possibly because they do not know um, themselves, but because they don't tell you what's more to it, it's, it's like now you can't enter into the experience of actually being saved um, because you don't know what the benefits are of being saved. You don't know how to tap into um, the services. So for example, when you start a new job, um, they will tell you there's a benefits package or something like that and in but in that benefits package as well they'll tell you okay you have to contact this department in order to release this thing in order to get that form in order to return it to this so they'll give you lots of information about how you can actually access these benefits so in church a lot of the time when you they'll tell you yeah okay you're saved and you're free from sin and they'll, they'll tell you these things but it's like how do I access these things and they don't know or they aren't they don't have the resources, they don't have the time, um, they don't know to tell you these things. <laughs> um, but there's so many different things that they just don't tell you now how you can actually access the benefits of actually being saved. And that will actually, that is what actually saves you. It's those access things that will now actually save you because a lot of people then they'll go from that altar call experience and they will um, just be like, okay, yeah, I'm saved. Um, but then they will leave church and they will go back to a life of sin because they don't know they don't know what's next they don't know what to expect they don't know what they're supposed to do they don't know how to pray they don't there's so many things that they you just don't they just don't teach you um that yeah you just end up pretty much just like lost again a lost sheep just wandering around in the darkness um but they're going like yeah i'm saved i'm a christian and i'm saved and it's like yeah but you're not <laughs> and it's um and it's terrible to see um and so yeah for us here at life Assembly, it's really really important that we kind of help you guys and give you as much access information to to help you on your journey with god because it's not supposed to be a hard life in that i think a lot of people will look at christianity and be like yeah but living living life as a christian is really hard um and it's like it's it's not supposed to be hard because god's actually given us help but if you don't know how to access the help, then you are going to struggle and you are going to find it really hard. It's just, it's, it's that simple. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to, that's, that's kind of, I guess, why it was so important for me, I guess, to speak about understanding today. Um, and it's a position that the devil loves us to be in, um, to be confused um, and to lack understanding is, is what the devil loves. Because as I said, if we don't know how to access the benefits of being saved and what it means to be a child of God and to have an inheritance um, of the kingdom. If you don't know any of those things, then you just, you still continue rolling around in his world and then you're not a threat to him. So he's happy to keep you in that, the darkness. Um, so yeah, we're here to give you guys light. That's why we are <laughs> light, light Bible study. Um, so I'm gonna go to Proverbs four, um, and yeah, I'm even just looking at the time here, and I've spoken a lot already. But <laughs> we're gonna go to Proverbs four, um, and we're gonna go through Proverbs four and just kind of get some understanding about understanding, <laughs> and um, hopefully that I can wrap that up in the next yeah ten minutes, and um, that will kind of at least give us. Uh, a good landing strip for how we're now going to approach the rest of our study time because we're going to now go into studying the bible knowing how important it is to be paying attention to the things that we're reading um, and seeking and desiring understanding from those things because it's not just words to read every every word and every verse and every chapter and every book in the bible is an experience that we can go through and as we can see, there's a lot, there's a lot of the Bible. <laughs> so it is a, it, it, there's so much to understand in there. Um, so yeah, don't rush it. When you read the Bible, don't rush it and just try to get through it quickly. And be like, yeah, I've read it, I've read it. If you haven't managed to pull something out, you probably haven't read it. So don't stress about um, reading the Bible and 
feeling that you need to read it like three or four times, that's fine. I've been stuck in one book for about a month before because it's like every time I read like a, a verse and it'll be like, then I just get taken on this like really mad journey to like this scripture links to that one, this links to that, da 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 da, da and it's like, okay, I've just spent an hour reading like two verses <laughs> it's like, and you get really frustrated, but it's like, it's a good frustration because you've learned a lot, but it's just like, I just wanna read, I just wanna read. Um, but yeah, don't, don't worry about it, that's a human thing. We like things to be quick and easy, and unfortunately, the, I say unfortunately, it's good, because the, the end result means that we're full of knowledge and the wisdom of God. But as humans, we just wanna kind of get to the end quickly. We're, we live a lifestyle of convenience. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna start at Proverbs 4, verse um, one. Um, and if, I don't know what, what version, what version have you got there, Donna? You tell me what version you've got. King James Version. Oh, lovely. Okay, King James Version. Lovely stuff. <laughs> lovely stuff. Does your, um, does your King James Version have a title for Proverbs 4? Yes, it says, the command, the command to obtain wisdom. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Okay, so mine says, um, to get wisdom at any cost. So what I love, um, and so your one says the command. So this is a commandment from God. That's what the first thing we need to understand. And the scripture will tell us, it tells us a couple of times or a few times, those who love me obey my commands. So this now is a command, is to get wisdom. God clearly sees that wisdom is something that's very important and very key in our journey with him. So just to kick us off, is in my, I'm reading NIV by the way. Mine says, listen, my sons, um, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. So something that's really important here is with my one, it says pay attention. To pay is to actually means and implies that there is a cost. So we actually have to give up something in order to receive something. So when, when we're looking at the value of understanding, it's already said in the title, at any cost. So again it's implied there is a cost and the value is really high yours says it's a command <laughs> it's actually a command so it means at all costs you put aside anything else there's nothing that's as important as gaining understanding and gaining wisdom this is this is this is what god wants and to be honest we understand wisdom to be the application of the mind of god and the desires of god in our lives it makes sense that this is a command from God. And it makes sense that we should forego everything else and anything else in order to obtain understanding. I'm gonna skip a little bit to verse four, where it says, then he taught me and he said to me, take hold of my words with all your heart, keep my commands and you will live. So, I've stopped on that word live there and I've, actually, I've highlighted it in my Bible because if we understand, I'm going to just quickly flip to um, the book of Matthew where Jesus says to his disciples, I am the way, the truth and the life. And what we understand from that is the destination of life is actually to come to know God. So here when it says, keep my commands and you will live, means keep my commands and you will come to know God. You will actually make it to God. You will reach the end of your salvation. So again, it just shows the importance of keeping the commands of God. That's So when people will say, you know, oh, I'm saved or I've been saved, we understand that there's actually a journey now to being saved or to reach the end of your salvation. And to reach the end of your salvation is to find life, which is to know God. And by doing that, by keeping the commands of God, that's how we get there. Um, I will now do, 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 skip ahead again. <clears throat> so in your own time, I do actually implore you to read through Proverbs 4 because all of it is important. I'm just trying to pick out um, some key bits just for, I guess, to give a flavour <laughs> um, to, to why it is so important. Um, in verse 11 now, it says, I instruct you in the way of wisdom. So this is, so God instructs us in the way of wisdom. 
why what are the benefits and the values of being instructed in the wisdom of god if we skip if we go forward to verse 12 it says when you walk your steps will not be hampered when you run you will not stumble so for someone who operates in the way of wisdom and under the instruction of god we will walk a life where we're not we don't struggle we're not um we're not finding ourselves tripping over those same hurdles that we tripped over two months ago. So, so many people that will now wander back to sin and they'll be like, oh man, but I've just done this. And I thought, or, or they will try to quit smoking and they can never quit smoking. They'll try to quit drinking, but they can never quit drinking. It's because they're not operating under the wisdom of God. They, so they are constantly stumbling and they don't know why. And just to confirm that they don't know why, um is verse 19 where it says but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness and just to kind of make clear my mom where it says wicked when god refers to wicked and evil i think in human language we've made wicked and evil sound i say sound really bad but it it is bad but it's very black and white in the world of god um or in the in the heavens wicked and evil just refers to those people who just do not follow god's commands so it's not as I don't know, ugly and scary as I guess we make it out to be. Because we're always like, oh man, I feel so, you know, to be wicked is something like really like evil. But for God, it's just like, if you don't follow my commands, you're evil. It's just point blank, that's it. So, um, so yeah, so it says, but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So their their problem is that they lack knowledge. They don't, they will, so they will be struggling to get away from sin. They'll be struggling to stop smoking. They'll be struggling to stop drinking and they don't know why. Those of us who walk with God and keep the commands of God and operate under the wisdom of God actually know why. So, and it's, I mean, it's happened, it's happened to me before and not even too long ago. If I come up against, uh, I'll say temptations, um, because of now the journey that I've been walking with God so far, not only can I see the temptation coming and I can see it like, so imagine um, if someone comes up to you and they have a concealed weapon and they just stab you in the side or something and you just find that, oh, I'm bleeding. That's the person who's in the world of the wicked. They just don't, like they just find, they're just hemorrhaging. But for those of us who now operate under the government of God, um, it is now that you actually see that that perpetrator coming towards you the knife is like this <laughs> and then they're trying to get at you like this and then you're able to go like this <laughs> that's the difference but that's how i would uh, describe it now um as opposed to like me like about three or four years ago i just find that oh my god i've just done this thing again and you don't even know how you ended up there but for me now and for for what will come for all of you guys is that you will now just be able to see it plain as day that doesn't look like the right thing to do i'm just gonna go this way instead and you'll know that that way is the better way and that way is the bad way um so that's what it means yeah to operate under the wisdom um and the light of god so that is yeah, so that's me in proverbs 4 oh my gosh and we have actually done a half an hour and i feel really 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 bad what i will do um is <clears throat> the first slide that we did have to go through um was yeah why do i believe in jesus and i'm gonna take you to a quick scripture to just give you a very very easy answer <laughs> very easy answer to why you believe in jesus and then next week we're gonna um dive into the back of house of believing in jesus and what it actually means to be saved and what it means to when you when you you can now you'll now be able to confidently say i believe in jesus and you'll know why you believe in jesus and what you actually believe that's the goal that we're going to get to um for this first topic so if you follow me to the book of john i believe it yes it is in the book of john um and i have got a couple of <clears throat> it's two scriptures i've actually got in the book of john okay so we're going to go to john 8 first 
We could have actually gone six, but. <coughs> So John eight, verse forty seven, and I love I love this scripture because it's just so I don't know controversial. <laughs> I love a little bit of controversy. Um, so um, if we first ask the question, why do I believe in Jesus? It is verse forty seven, John eight to verse forty seven says, "Whoever belongs to God hears what God says." The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. So very clearly, the different, not everyone basically, not everyone is actually supposed to uh, partake of salvation. Not everyone was actually designed to be able to hear God. So if you are watching this and you believe in your heart that you're a Christian, and you look at the Bible and are like, oh, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. I believe in Jesus. I believe he came and he died. You believe those things because you were actually chosen to believe. That's, that's the first take-home message that you need to understand. Not everyone will hear it. So you'll probably come across people in your everyday lives and you'll just, they'll be, you'll be telling them about Jesus. You'll be telling them about like, oh, how wonderful God is. You know, God spoke to me. I had visions. I had dreams. I had this. They will be like, no, nah, don't believe it. You're lying. Um, you're just wrong. I believe this. I believe, okay, that's fine. Don't argue with them. It's not a problem. You have John 8, 47. <laughs> it says, whoever belongs to God, he is God. They just don't belong. They just don't belong to God. So don't stress yourself. I think you have to fight everybody. Be the light. All you have to do is keep being the light of God. And by being the light of God, people will look on you and they will see God. Those who are supposed to see God will see God. Those who are supposed to hear God will hear God. Um, but your focus is to become that light that people can now see on earth. Because without the lights on earth, then it's just going to be complete darkness. And that's not the aim. We want God's kingdom to come on earth. So we have to be the representatives. Um, and the second scripture that I'll use to just buffer that point is John 6, verse, from verse 36, which in NIV says, But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. So John is, um, Jesus is actually addressing some people who actually had come out of the crowd, and they had listened to something he said, and they now believed in what he said. Um, and so he's addressing some of them, and some, some people are still coming up with, like, you know, arguments, and you just don't believe what's going on. So he's just... He's responding to those people. He said, but, but as I told you, you have seen me and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. So just to repeat verse 37, all those the Father gives me will come to me. That is it. So if the Father didn't bring them, they won't come. Yeah, it doesn't matter how much you shout. Doesn't <laughs> matter how much you cry, doesn't matter how much you want to fight these people, it doesn't matter. Um, if God did not send them um, and God didn't send for them, they're not going to come. So just continue to be the light. Um, skipping on to verse 39 is, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. So as we know, there's a time to come not necessarily in this time where we're in now, but there is a time to come where Jesus will return for the body of Christ, which is the church. Um, and that is what he is referring to here when he comes at the last day. Um, and so our, our goal is to continue to build up the church and to build that body for Christ. Um, so this is, yeah, he's now just gone on to just say, um, <clears throat> He will lose none of all that God has sent him. So those people that are supposed to be there at the last day, they will be there. So have peace. <laughs> have peace in your mind that they will be there. Um, and our job is just to align with uh, the plans and the desires of God so that God can use us to be a part of building that body of Christ. Amen. <laughs> so that is the end of our half an hour ish we've kind of gone over a little bit but it's it is well it is well i didn't want to 
cut too short. I want to give I wanted to give you guys a little bit of what I'd actually planned to to deliver. Um, and I thank the Holy Spirit for His uh, assistance. And um, it's always important when we do anything um, to advance the kingdom that we always do invite the Holy Spirit to to abide with us. I mean, wanting with us all the time. But it is important as we speak and we deliver a message of God that the Holy Spirit is the one that actually goes through with the message because there's a difference between me just going blah, 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 and people actually hearing and being edified. So um, I believe <laughs> that something that I have said today has been helpful and will help someone to grow and inspire someone in their journey with God. So um, I thank the Holy Spirit for his presence this evening. Um, for us here in Bible study, um, what I really want us to do, there's two verses um, or two, two series of chapters that I wanted us to kind of read on and do further reading. So on those points where why do I believe in Jesus, I want us to look at John 6 um, from verse 22 to 59 and John 8 verse 21 to 59 so those will cover in more depth about so you something that's really important and i also i guess i think i share with you is really important to share with you is and i've experienced it a lot when i was in church before is people will often just pick scriptures that fit a particular agenda um and unfortunately when we do that we end up losing the understanding of the message that was being delivered. So as you saw there, when I was talking about in John 6, I kind of gave you now a little bit of a story around that scripture that I gave to kind of help it make sense. Um, I don't just want to pick random scriptures and try to make a story. It's not my story, it's God's story. So it's important to always make sure that we refer to the full section that it's actually, um, it can be, it can feel sometimes like, oh, this is wrong. <laughs> I have to go and read this whole thing, but it's 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 really it's, if you don't do that and you don't show that due diligence and pay attention to these things, you will miss the understanding, and that's kind of the importance now of where it says pay attention to gain understanding and get wisdom at all cost. This is the cost. It's actually reading it. <laughs> it is sitting down and reading it, um, and something that I wanted to stress as well to everyone is if you can get yourself a physical bible get a physical bible um because and i've i've been victim to this if i choose to sit on my phone and use the bible app for example and i have got bible app on my phone and it can be very helpful to jump between different versions because different versions can help you um just sometimes flesh out different understanding um it's useful, however, it's, your phone is full of distractions. So, and it's happened to me so many times, it's like, I've, I've actually gone on my phone to check the Bible app for something and then found myself watching like videos on YouTube or something. It's like, well, how did I get here? <laughs> I just don't understand. So, so um, when you do manage to finally, you know, pick up the, because it's again, it's difficult when you decide to yourself, all right, I'm gonna just read this Bible. I'm just going to focus, I'm going to read. It can be difficult to do that. So when you do finally manage to muster <laughs> that energy to do it, um, try to do it with the physical one so you have no distractions and you can just focus on the word of God. Um, because, yeah, the, the world is designed to keep us away from knowing God. So it throws so much stimulus at us in order to keep us away. And the one thing it can't do is put adverts in the Bible. Thankfully, I think I haven't, I haven't come across a Bible yet that has got like pop-up adverts or something like that. It is just <laughs> the word of God. So when you can um, avoid using the Bible app where possible, just stick to the written word um, and read it slowly and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding. Because when, when you are reading, um, and it's happened to me, it happens to me, you know, all the time now, but it, it will happen to you as you continue to put that effort into it. Um, because as the Bible tells us, the 
God is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. So for those of us that really do just be like, God, I'm not leaving the pages of this book until you show me something. <laughs> <laughs> when, you do that, when you do that, God will show you something. Um, so just spend time, like I said, every word, every sentence, um, every verse and every chapter has a story behind it. Um, and it has an experience to be told. So don't read it lightly and just try to go brr, 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 brr. take every word in and then after you finished reading contemplate those words meditate on those words say holy spirit speak to me what is it that you actually were trying to show me in there what do you want me to learn and just wait on that just wait on it keep just thinking about it keep thinking about it keep playing the scripture over and over in your mind and asking the holy spirit for understanding and he will begin to reveal um depths and yeah keep revealing depths and depths to you um that will now you can now apply to your everyday life so i'm gonna as i said round it up there and i always yeah i'm doing terrible i'm really i'm doing really badly i'll get better at this i'm sure um so yeah read through proverbs 4 and that john 6 22 to 59 and john 8 20, 21 to 59 and then next week we will continue um and we'll look in the book of luke i believe we'll be in the book of luke next week but we'll also come back with some questions for us so and um, for you guys here on um bible study you guys obviously we have a group chat so please if you have any questions and um, we can keep talking in the week and stuff i'm not, I'm not just going to disappear um <laughs> i'm here to help you guys so yeah as you keep reading through the book of john um give it a read and if you have any questions or anything, just yeah, let me know and I'm happy to, yeah, let's keep keep conversation going. Um, but until next week, um, thank you so much for joining me. And um, yeah, have a great, great week. It's Monday. Awesome. I'm actually really excited to be here on a Monday, to be honest. <laughs> I'm normally here on a Wednesday morning, but I'm here on a Monday afternoon. So it's really, really exciting for me to be able to kick off the week um, and give some, some hopefully bless someone. Um, so thank you again for joining me and yeah, I'll see you guys. I'll see you all later.